Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. What started as a normal walk to her husband's business ends in gunfire. How police say it all went down and the latest on that woman's condition. Plus, a wedding event center filing for bankruptcy. What wedding couples had to say about their financial loss. And let's take a live look out of the Alamo City. That is whew, not really able to see much of the Alamo City, but we can tell you it is already 63 degrees out there and it is already a little bit humid out there. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for a full forecast in just a few moments. Good morning. It is 6 o'clock this Sunday morning. February 9th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, yeah, I think Sarah had it yesterday. What did you say? Frizzly? Frizzly Drizzly? Drizzlies. The February Frizzly Drizzly. There you go. Right? You guys got it. Yeah, the February Frizzly Drizzlies. And taking a look outside right now, wow, it is very muggy and icky and sticky out there. We have got uh, areas of drizzle and mist around and uh, taking a look at temperatures. Well, it looks like my computer has crashed. We have got some computer problems going on this morning, so I'll take a second here to try to load things up again. But what you got to know is that it's gross outside. Temperatures are really struggling uh, to get uh, down there. We really actually only have temperatures in the 60s, and I'll work on that computer in just a bit here. But uh, again, the thing you got to know today is that it's going to be gray. It's going to look like this, and there is a potential for a few peaks of sunshine in the afternoon. But unfortunately, that's about it. After that, the sun goes away and we won't see it really until Wednesday night. So we've got a lot to talk in the forecast. I'm going to switch over to being a computer engineer and try to fix this. I'll be back with a look at that forecast in just a few minutes. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Right now, police trying to figure out what exactly led to a deadly accident this morning on the city's west side. Police were called out to Highway 90 and Zarzamora Road around 4 in the morning. Our Alicia Beretta is live downtown with the latest. Alicia. Well, we know that the impact was pretty severe and police suspect that high speed could have been a factor in this accident. They police say that by the time they arrived, unfortunately, that victim, that driver was dead on the scene. And this is what police has said so far regarding this fatal accident. It happened around 350 this morning. Investigators say the driver of the truck was headed westbound on Highway 90. They suspect again he was speeding down the highway and as of now say it played a big role in what happened next. Police say preliminary information suggests that the driver tried to exit on Sarsamora Road but hit the wall divider head on. And by the time authorities were at the scene, that driver wasn't responsive anymore. He was declared dead on the scene. Very limited information on who that fatal victim is. Um, we don't have much information, but I will have um, some information from the medical examiner's office coming up this morning on six, at 630 on GMSA. Also, if you're headed that way westbound on Highway 90, do know that there may be some backup because as of now on Couples Road, it is closed down because they are still processing the scene and cleaning up. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Alicia. Also new this morning, one woman is in serious condition after she was shot twice overnight. San Antonio police say a woman was walking to her husband's place of business around 2.30 in the morning in the 4100 block of North Hine when she was approached by two men in a silver vehicle. Now that we're told that she was shot two times, once in the back and another time in the ankle, she was transported to SAMC with serious injuries. The two gunmen left the scene and are still at large. The victim remains in stable condition. She claims she did not know the men. And in your morning headlines, future Mr. and Mrs. at Noah's event venue here in San Antonio went from planning their dream wedding to being part of a nightmare. All of this after finding out that the venue is closing down. The wedding venue allegedly gave no warning to customers, something that's already happened in many other cities. Now, one couple sharing their frustration after learning their $10,000 investment into what should be their special day. Basically, that money going down the drain. The sudden closing having a painful impact on not just them, but several other couples as well, making them desperate to get the money back that they've already spent. I want to know what what is going on and am I getting my money back? When we look on the on the internet, you know, under all the closures, it is multiple women screaming, crying. The company filed for bankruptcy without warning, and the directors at Noah's Event Center says that this closure caught them by surprise as well. Now, 
leaving the entire staff without a job. Corporate, though, releasing a statement saying that their attorneys plan to call all of the clients starting Monday about how they're going to move forward. And Democratic presidential candidates are giving their all for the New Hampshire primary. Former Bright's President Joe Biden sharpening his attacks against Pete Buttigieg. Now, the comments also echoing a recent ad that came out just yesterday. ABC's Trevor Alt has the latest. With only two days until New Hampshire casts its vote in the presidential primary, the gloves are coming off between candidates. Former Vice President Joe Biden taking aim at Mayor Pete Buttigieg. Joe Biden helped save the auto industry, which revitalized the economy of the Midwest. Pete Buttigieg revitalized the sidewalks of downtown South Bend by laying out decorative brick. Launching that scathing new attack ad, belittling the mayor's lack of national experience. This guy's not a Barack Obama. Barack Obama has been a United States senator of a really large state. Buttigieg has rocketed toward the top of the New Hampshire polls after a strong Iowa finish. Some folks are out there saying, what business does a mayor of South Bend have running for the presidency? You don't have an office in Washington? That's exactly the point. And Senator Bernie Sanders, who dominated in New Hampshire last go-round, is once again at the top of the pack. People want health care for all. How do we stop it? Well, they ain't going to stop it. Senator Amy Klobuchar also riding a wave of energy right after a strong debate performance. She's hoping it will translate to a higher showing. While Senator Elizabeth Warren slipping in the polls, spent the weekend knocking on doors, gathering support. Last night, just about every candidate was gathered at a Democratic Party fundraiser here in New Hampshire. And the line that got possibly the biggest cheer of the night was from Bernie Sanders, saying the party will unite behind whoever gets the nomination in order to beat President Trump. And while that may be true, the party's pretty heavily divided right now on who has the best shot at beating the president. Trevor Alt, ABC News, Manchester, New Hampshire. And also prepping for New Hampshire and fresh off his impeachment acquittal, President Donald Trump is set to head to Manchester tomorrow. In his latest Make America Great Again rally, he is expected to draw on crowds once again. This is his second visit to New Hampshire since last August. And over in Florida, the city of Parkland, along with other organizations in the area, will host numerous events this coming week for the second anniversary of the tragic school shooting. Now, their main focus of the week, healing, and serve to remember the 17 students and staff members killed in the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School shooting. They were killed when a, Doug, when a gunman opened fire during the school day. Since then, a number of the surviving students have come out and become committed gun reform advocates. And time now, 6.07, 63 degrees out. And this wording, the race to SACE is not getting any easier. We're taking a look at last night's Spurs game. Highlights and lowlights from Sacramento. What happened and what's next? But still, we stay optimistic, cautiously optimistic. <laughs> and the reason they're on the road so much is because it is rodeo time here in San Antonio. We are going to learn where bull riding originated. We're going to have a full story for you just to come on GMSA. And taking a look outside with live cam. Yeah, we have the little frizzly drizzlies, but um, yeah, it, it's still kind of mild there at six, 63 degrees now. Yeah, we're going to check in with Sarah to see what we can expect for the rest of your week in just a minute. This case at Rodeo Remembers is powered by the all-new 2020 Chevy Silverado HD. The sport of bull riding can be traced back to the haciendas in the 16th century in colonial Mexico. Ranch hands from different haciendas would put their skills to the test and these competitions were called chariadas. By the mid 1800s, chariadas had become popular throughout the Southwest, especially in Texas. One event was a form of bullfighting called jaripeo, where a rider rode the bull until it died. Considered cruel in the States by the late 1800s, this competition was replaced with steer riding, which had become popular in Wild West shows at the time. Then, in 1935, a Mississippi rodeo replaced the more manageable steers with bulls. That's when bull riding left the gate and became the popular sport we know today. And it always really is cool to do stuff like that because I learn so much when I do stories like that. You learn about the history and we partake, I've partaken in rodeo for three years now and you learn something new every year. It's so yeah, cool. so now you know the behind the, behind the history. Behind the history, yeah, we know how bull riding, history. yeah, well, all of it because we <laughs> got to go out to rodeo. Are you guys planning on going to the rodeo this year? Mm. I haven't made plans yet. No, have you, other than for have work. Have you gone? Other than for work, I don't know. 
Because it's yeah. always like our work schedules are a little chaotic, especially yes. like we're here this early. They are a little chaotic. And you know what? The weather's a little different and chaotic mm. this morning. We are starting to see areas of mist and drizzle and even some light fog in some areas. So we've got a lot to talk about in the forecast. First of all, let's go ahead and take a look at the radar here. You can see a few passing light rain showers uh, around San Antonio, but these are actually picking up on the light rain showers rather than the drizzle. Around Bear County, that area getting some light rain right now uh, is just in the northern uh, western section of San Antonio near Holotus. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and pan over to the east. And what you'll notice is that near the airport, we're not getting any rainfall. And that's where uh, we end up seeing uh, the rain totals for the week for the day. And so as you know, we're probably not going to get anything reported right there. But take a look out to the uh, east closer to to the Seguin area. We're going to go ahead and zoom in here near Seguin and just east of, of San Antonio. A little bit of a light rain shower working its way up to Seguin through Nixon, Smiley, and near Gonzales. This is the kind of rain that we could see today. Just some nuisance light rain and some drizzle. Other than that, it's pretty mild this morning. Temperatures are in the 60s. It's 63 in San Antonio at the airport, 64 at JBSA Randolph, 62 in Comfort. Kerrville, you're at 61 degrees this time yesterday you were near freezing so a big temperature change all because humidity has really returned this morning it's 65 in del rio and 68 in Catula. again let's take a look at the humidity tracker dew points are in the 60s so that's pretty muggy in the future cast today more of what we're seeing right now drizzle with areas in the afternoon of uh, isolated rain showers and then maybe a few peaks of sunshine but that's about it we're going to be able to warm up to the low to mid 70s with a little bit of sun in the afternoon and then clouds are going to take over southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. This is kind of icky and sticky and gross outside when we have temperatures in the 60s and in the 70s. But tomorrow a front is going to move through in the morning hours. That's going to bring with it the chance for more organized rain, especially in the morning, more widespread rainfall, about 60% and temperatures are going to cool down quite quite a bit. Take a look at these high temperatures. Tomorrow's going to be an upside down day where we'll start off warm and then we'll have a cool afternoon in the 50s. Then we'll be in the 50s through the middle of the week. Another chance for drizzle and light rain on Tuesday, then scattered rain, especially in the morning on Wednesday. And then we clear out in time for Valentine's Day and part of the weekend. Saturday should be pretty nice. At least it'll be nice then, but you know, I guess at least the rain is going to be with mild temperatures during the day. Yeah, chilly. It'll be chilly. But not like 30s. That's true. <laughs> Some might say there's a silver lining to the week. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, uh, oh. Uh, nice. <laughs> no, but seriously, I now have to wait like three more days to get a car wash, and it's not helpful. I'm sorry. It's man. gross. There's I'm like a, a good like half inch of just dirt. Uh, on all the of our cars are gross. I know. Mine's it, looking pretty bad, thing. too. Either yeah. way. Thursday, though, gorgeous. Thursday looks yeah. great. Can't wait. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. 616, 63 degrees out. And a preview of what you can expect at tonight's Oscars, who's up for an award, and the picks from us here at GMSA. I did so much research for this. I listened <laughs> to interviews this morning. It was extensive. Didn't need to do much research for this game, though. We're going to be talking about the Spurs taking on Denver tomorrow. But here's the thing. A lot has already happened on the Rodeo Road Trip. We're going to go over that and talk about what's next. And we have your winning lotto numbers. Pick 3, 227, Fireball 3, Daily four, two, nine, six, eight, fireball four. And the cash five is 10, 20, 23, 28. And powerball 35, 49, 50, 59, 66. Powerball is six, power play is two. Good luck. We'll be right back. Good morning and happy Sunday. Not a really happy Sunday if you're a Spurs fan. The silver and black, four games into the rodeo road trip, and so far, Zero and four. Last night, the Spurs had what was supposed to be the easiest matchup of the trip, taking on the Kings in Sacramento. There was the man of the night, DeJounte Murray. A little handoff here, and bang! Three from way downtown. Here's the problem, though. 
First quarter was the most competitive for the Spurs, and they still lost from by one point. Then in the third, the Kings took over, dominated the rest of the way, thanks to a surge off the bench in Buddy Heald. He knocked down nine three-pointers. It also didn't help that DeMar DeRozan was thrown from the game after consecutive technical fouls. DeJounte, though, finishing with 17 points, nine assists, and nine rebounds. Clearly, though, not enough. The Spurs losing big in Sacramento, 122-102. to 102. So here it is. Next up, again, another tough matchup. The Spurs are taking on the Denver Nuggets in Denver at the Pepsi Center in Colorado. And, well, this was supposed to be the game. <laughs> this was supposed to be it. You were supposed I to know. get the win. And I have to say, I have seen a Nuggets game at Mile High uh -huh. in Denver. Beautiful stadium. I will <laughs> say... Really hoping the Spurs can, can break yes. this loss because they are moving further and further away from that I last know. playoff spot. Well, we hope the Spurs enjoy the beautiful stadium with a win. There you go. Yes. Cautious optimism. <laughs> yes. They can bring it back. I think so. Go Spurs, they can go. surprise us, you know, for the team we thought. Maybe not so much, but the team we didn't, maybe they will. I don't know what that means, but go Spurs, <laughs> go. 621, 63 degrees I, out. I'm not a real sportscaster. There you go. <laughs> so the Oscars are finally here, and we have a look at what you can expect tonight. Coming up on GMSA, who's up for the title? Mm. All right, time to take a look at birthdays. Here is Roy, 48 years old. Happy birthday, Roy. Happy birthday, Roy. And this is Sophia, who's turning four. Aww. Cute picture. Happy birthday, Sophia. My little girl likes unicorns as well. I think that's the thing right now. So keep sending on your birthday pictures to ksat.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and an age. We show them every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday right here on GMSA. And welcome back. It's 625. So the 92nd Annual Academy Award is about to get underway in Hollywood with some of the historic records that may be shattered. As tensions continue to build up, we have a preview of the nominees that you can expect to hear about. Korean film Parasite, potentially the first film to win Best Picture and Best Foreign Film. What? Okay. I'm going to go. The nomination also a first for director Bong Joon-ho and Cynthia Erivo receiving acclaim for her role in Harriet. Would you like to pick a new name to mark your freedom? Harriet Tubman. She could be the youngest person to win the EGOT, an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony. Scarlett Johansson looking to become the first person to win two acting awards in the same year, up for Best Actress in Marriage Story. I didn't ever really come alive for myself. I was just feeding his aliveness and Best Supporting Actress for Jojo Rabbit, also the first nominations of her career. Among first-time nominees, President Barack Obama for the documentary American Factory. If it wins, he would be the first U.S. president with an Oscar. Hmm. Very I interesting. That. I didn't know that either. I'll have to check it out. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, well, time now is 626, 63 degrees out. And here at JMSA, our crews decided to get in on the Oscar picks for tonight's show. All right. What did you think? <laughs> I, so I'd only seen a few. Uh huh. Um, Joker, I picked. Um, I just, you know, it's great. I oh, love, for the movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're just going to start with Best Picture. Oh, I picked Parasite. I, I picked okay. Joker. Well, I picked, well, actually, I, I put two, and I guess they just picked one. I put 1917, and I also put Parasite. Mm. It's just... Um, I don't know. You know, Parasite's not a not a pretty movie, but it was very good. I yeah, haven't seen Parasite yet, but it's on the list. Yeah, you need to see. Yeah, it. I did. I did pick Parasite to win. I think it would be really wonderful to see them win a foreign film. Yeah, and, best, and picture. best picture. Absolutely. Yeah, and the director's up as well. All right, what do we got next? Do we have any more? We'll do yeah. more later. I guess. We're gonna do more throughout the show. That's a tease. Make sure to stay with us throughout the morning. Yeah. Boom. We'll right Parasite. <laughs> Parasite. <laughs> Uh, over two dozen people killed in a mall shooting overseas. We're going to have the latest from Thailand. And back here at home, a man sideswiped by a train overnight. How would San Antonio police say it all went down? Good morning and welcome back. 631 this Sunday morning and yesterday it ended up being kind of a nice day. It yeah. was dreary out in the beginning of the day. But then it got nice a little later on. Yes, it did. Yes, it I did. was upset because uh -oh. I was like, <laughs> okay, inside? I was going to run all my errands in the day. I go uh -huh. to sleep very early. Yes, you did. And then once I was done with everything, I went inside and the sun came out and I was like, 
Why? Well, just go out for a second and enjoy it. Mm. No. Easier said you, than done. Sarah, are we expecting the same thing today? <laughs> I did that just to spite you, Max. I made sure the sun came out right when you had to go to bed. No, uh, we are not going to see as much of the sun today. In fact, it'll be hard for us to see a few peaks of sunshine in the afternoon, but it is possible. Right now outside, it is much warmer than seasonably average. We usually see a morning low temperature right around 40 uh, in the 40s, but right now uh, we're well into the 60s. It's 63 at the airport. It's 59 at Bernie Sage Airfield, 61 in Kerrville and 62 in Comfort. On top of that, we have areas of fog, mist and drizzle out there uh, with some uh, light rain, a little bit more organized to the east of San Antonio, close to Seguin. Uh, you can see crossing I-10 right now and Highway 90, some uh, splotchy, isolated free car washes out there. Uh, but that's about it for us. Other than that, uh, we're looking at some light rain through the Nixon Smiley area, generally east of San Antonio. Let's go ahead and take a look at visibility. Just about a lot of us dealing with uh, some drizzle as well, and that's reducing visibility down to a mile and a half at Bernie Stage Airfield, down to three quarters of a mile in New Braunfels, and down to half a mile at the airport. So please use caution on the roads this morning if you have to be out and about this early Sunday. Uh, and then we'll carry a chance for isolated light rain through about the lunch shower. A few peaks of sunshine in the afternoon as we see a high temperature near 73. Then it'll be a mild evening before a cold front arrives tomorrow morning. All of the details on our temperature drop and our rain chances, which actually continue through the middle of next week in just a few minutes. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Westbound lanes of Highway 90 near Zarzamora still shut down for hours after authorities process and clean up what's left of a deadly accident. Our Alicia Beretta is live this morning with the latest. Now, Alicia, do police have any information about the victim? Well, very limited information. We do know that the fatal victim in this case is the driver of this single vehicle accident. I did call the medical examiner's office and they say they don't have a positive ID on the victim just yet, but police say that he's a male in his early 20s. And this all happened just before 4, exactly 3.50 a.m. Authorities say the driver of that truck was headed westbound on Highway 90. Um, and factor they fear could be a big factor into what happened next. Um, speed could be a factor in what happened next. Preliminary information suggests that the driver tried to exit on Sarsamora Road, but instead he hit the wall divider head on. And by the time police and EMS got to the scene, that driver was already dead. Just know that if you are headed out this um, that way, Highway 90 westbound, it's near Couples Road where those lanes will be shut down for the next couple of hours because authorities right now are still processing the scene and cleaning up. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Also new this morning, one man is in the hospital after being hit by a train, a situation that could have ended much worse. San Antonio police telling us that he was walking along the train tracks around 340 this morning in the 1000 block of West Ashby Place. That's when a train was approaching and the man was sideswiped by one of the train cars. Officials say that he was just too close as it was passing. He was taken to university hospital and is expected to be okay. In your morning headlines, the coronavirus outbreak numbers continue to rise. The latest figures reported by global health authorities show more than 37,500 people with the virus and more than 800 deaths. Now mainland China has reported the virus death toll has risen to 811, surpassing SARS deaths in the 2002-2003 outbreak. A U.S. citizen died of the virus in Wuhan, the city at the center of that outbreak, and was apparently the first American death. Almost all of the new fatalities were in and around Wuhan, and now China's ruling Communist Party faces continuing anger from the public over the death of a doctor who was threatened by police after trying to sound the alarm about the disease over one month ago. And in Thailand, 26 people are dead and 57 more are wounded in the country's worst mass shooting in history. Now, police there say the man who pulled the trigger was a soldier. Officials said the soldier was angry over a financial dispute, first killing two people on the military base and then went on shooting as he drove to the mall where shoppers fled in terror. Now, it took police sharpshooters 16 hours to stop him. That suspect, a sergeant major, was eventually shot and killed in that same shopping mall.
And back here in the United States, an award-winning country music singer recording as he escaped flames when the tour bus actually caught fire. All right, so check this out. This was the frightening scene just south of Shreveport, Louisiana. Flames spewing into the air from the tour bus of country music singer Neil McCoy. McCoy and his team were on I-49, headed to perform in Alexandria. That's when the bus suddenly caught fire. All six on board did get out safely. McCoy actually went live on Facebook documenting the whole thing. The bus, known as Old Glory, is a total loss. Investigators now working to see what exactly sparked the blaze. And New York police searching for the person responsible for an assassination attempt on police officers. They are reporting that someone opened fire on two officers sitting in a marked van in the Bronx overnight. They say the suspect walked up and asked a question, engaged in conversation and started shooting. One officer was hit in the neck and chin and somehow is expected to be OK. The second officer wasn't hurt. That shooter ran away. Now authorities released photos of a suspect and are asking for the public's help to identify him. Time now, 637, 63 degrees out. And GMSA is getting in on the Oscars fund. Just ahead, who is up for an award later tonight and who we think will win. And celebrating a healthy heart lifestyle, how one organization doing their part to make a difference and where you can hear them out. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. So that is a look at our neighbor there, Central Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably because we can't see too much off in the distance, but 63 degrees right now, mild as far as the temps, but we're going to check in with Sarah to see what we can expect for the rest of your day. And welcome back at 641. So February is American Heart Month, and it's an effort to raise awareness about heart disease. Now to get the message out to women, the American Heart Association here in San Antonio hosting its 15th annual Vestido Rojo Conference on February 29th. And Stephanie knows all about the story because she actually talked with one volunteer who was almost a 30-year survivor. She talked about how she's working to make more women survivors. This year will mark Patricia Atti's 14th year volunteering with the Vestido Rojo Conference. She says the conference is a great way to get heart health information out to women, and it's also a lot of fun. We want the women to get the message because uh, cardiovascular disease takes the lives of one in three women. So imagine that's one third of your mothers, your sisters, or your friends. And we need them to know that they need to take care of themselves. And the message is something that hits close to home. Since the age of 24, Patricia has had heart problems. And then at the age of 29, she had open heart surgery. I want to help women be survivors like myself. This year, I'm actually celebrating my 30th year as a survivor. So, you know, I'm very happy. The goal of the conference, Patricia says, is for everyone to be aware of the warning signs so participants can take care of themselves and their families. Just last year, a participant recognized the symptoms after the conference and went to the ER right away. In the past, you know, she said, I don't think I would have, you know, I would have just blown off those symptoms. But she said, I knew something wasn't right. And everything that I've heard, you know, it, I remembered and I don't want to wait. And I went to the ER right away. And sure enough, she did need help. That woman ended up needing a pacemaker and is doing much better today. She will also be attending this year's Vestido Rojo Conference. And some warning signs of a heart attack. This is according to the American Heart Association. Chest discomfort, discomfort in other areas of the upper body, shortness of breath with or without that chest discomfort, and breaking out in a cold sweat, nausea, or lightheadedness. And this really is such an important message to get out there. I mean, heart health can't be talked about enough, especially this month. And there was even a participant, like, you know, in the story, she was saying that she came forward and said that it was a week last year, a week mm -hmm. after the conference last year, she had some of these symptoms and, and she she was there, she remembered, and she went to the ER and, you know, it was a good thing that she went. So wow. she's doing great now. So we're uh, glad to hear that. Yeah, glad yeah. to hear that. All right, taking a turn to weather. Yes. Yesterday ended up being a nice day. Today, yeah. Not so much. <laughs> not so much outside. You'll have to use those windshield wipers if you're going anywhere this morning because not only is there drizzle, but those roads are damp, so there's a lot of road spray out there too. Let's go ahead and take a look at the radar. You can see the light radar returns east of San Antonio, very splotchy in nature, but around San Antonio and in Bear County, we have got areas of drizzle and even some very light returns out in the uh, northwestern part of the county just outside of the 
1604 loop just south of Lotus. So a few light returns on the radar, but again, drizzle doesn't show up on the radar, so you'll just have to take my word for it. There is some areas of drizzle out there and some light rain along I-10 towards Seguin uh, and uh, in areas like Nixon, Smiley, and just south of Lavernia as well. And while I've got this forecast up right now, you can see there is a very light return just north of Windcrest and southeast of Wetmore. But again, there are areas of drizzle out there and that's really affecting visibility. Visibility is as low as a quarter of a mile in San Antonio at the moment, as low as uh, three quarters of a mile up in New Braunfels. So make sure to use those low beams while you're out and about early this morning, uh, because if you use those high beams, it tends to, the light tends to scatter uh, all on those particles and it actually becomes a little bit more difficult to see. Right now outside, boy, it's kind of muggy. It's 64 in San Antonio. Uh, that's nearly 20 degrees above what we usually see this time of year for our morning low. 64 out in Del Rio and 68 in Catula. But as we zoom out, notice how much colder it is up to the north. This is the source of our next cold front, which is actually going to be moving through tomorrow morning. But first, what you'll notice today is just the gray, damp and drizzly weather. A few isolated light showers like what we were seeing out near Skeen on the radar and maybe even a few peaks of sunshine briefly in the afternoon. That will allow our temperatures to get up into the low 70s. But by tomorrow morning, right at about 9 to 10 o'clock, we'll have that front move through and that will create a more organized showers and a broken line, maybe even a poss possibility of a few rumbles of thunder. So tomorrow morning's commute is going to be a little tricky. Go ahead and give yourself an extra 15 to 20 minutes to get to school or to work. Then that front will move through for the rest of the day and we'll actually see temperatures which will start out near 70 degrees drop into the 50s as you can see in this future cast uh, for tomorrow morning. And so it'll be breezy and cool tomorrow. But first we have to get through today again cloudy with areas of drizzle and light rain. Some sun in the afternoon 73 degrees but not as nice as yesterday. Southeast breeze at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Then our temperatures take a tumble because of tomorrow morning's cold front and we'll spend the middle of the week only in the 50s for high temperatures and we'll have a good chance for rain through Wednesday as well with the potential maximum rainfall potential for about half an inch to an inch of rainfall for many areas including Del Rio maybe up to half an inch of rain Del Rio is an extreme drought at the moment. Take a look at the seven day forecast as we summarize everything I just said. Basically what you need to know is that the first part of the week here through the middle of the week is going to be damp and it's going to be chilly. So time to bust out those sweaters. It's sweater weather. For sure. And rain jacket weather. And apparently. rain jacket weather. <laughs> Thankfully, we'll clear out by, uh, by I was going to say Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> My mind's in November. We'll clear out by Valentine's Day. Well, a lot of people love Thanksgiving, That's so true. there you go. Okay, well, thanks, Stephanie, for saving me there. <laughs> Thank you, right. Sarah. Well, here on GMSA, our crew decided to get in on the fun for tonight's award show yeah. right here on ABC. All right. All right. I'm not sure which one. Are the best actor? We're gonna best actor? Okay. Best actor. Yeah, we're gonna start All best right. Actor. All right. Well, yeah. Joaquin Phoenix. I want Joker. Can't go wrong. Oh. Yeah. I think we all said that. Except for Rosalind. Well, and Adam yeah. Driver. Actually, no, no, no. no. He did great. Too. I'm retracting my Joaquin Phoenix. I'm going really? Adam Driver really? because. I'm staying with Joaquin. Here's my problem. Sorry for all Star Wars fans. I thought he was not great in Star Wars. No. I didn't think he was a good actor. And then I watched <laughs> Marriage Story and I was like, wow. He was really good. So if you have a performance, well, it's different content. Yeah. I know, but, it, I don't but think the academy see. is sitting there thinking about how his performance. But was. if you can have a performance that can completely change my decision on how good an actor you are, uh, I'll say that true. was the best. No, he did great, but I just Rosalind. Like, Rosalind Joaquin is right. He phenomenal. did do good. He yeah, did do he did do. All right, he did do great. Time now, 6:49, 64 degrees out. All right. Well, can parents learn something from their kids? Yes, yes, they can. I know I have. When it comes to climate change, that story next. All right, let's take a look out at the roadways. Like Sarah was saying, there is going to be some spray on the roads. It's going to be damp conditions. So if you are out and about this Sunday morning, running errands, headed to church, make sure to drive safely and smart. We are going to have your full forecast coming up at 8 o'clock. And we're going to check in with Sarah before the end of the show. We'll be right back.
And Times Person of the Year, 16-year-old environmental activist Greta Thunberg has been influential when it comes to raising awareness on climate change. But not everyone believes that global warming is a real phenomenon. Now researchers say there may be a new way to inform the public. GMSA producer Jared Homing explains how kids play a crucial role. And he never got up and why he kept whining because he was sitting up. Kids learn all kinds of new facts every day. But could what they're taught in the classroom impact you? A new study says yes. You didn't get into all the Researchers split middle school classrooms into two groups. Twelve classrooms were taught the standard science curriculum. Eleven classrooms learned about climate impact on local wildlife, did some field work related to wildlife, and interviewed their parents. The results showed that students who participated in the specialized curriculum increased their concern about climate change, and as a result, their parents also showed more concern. Scientists say the program was particularly effective at changing the views of politically conservative parents, especially men. And it seemed that daughters were more effective than sons at boosting their parents' awareness about climate change. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Jared Homey. Okay, what do and the research suggests this intergenerational learning or passing of information from children to parents is a good way to help parents learn about the scientific basis of climate change. Now, you have a young daughter. What's Rooney, <laughs> six years old? Yeah, she's in kinder. Have you learned anything from Rooney? Uh, not on climate change yet, but yes, I have already started learning from Rooney. It's, yeah, it's very interesting. I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> so I'll have a whole, you know, I was going to say a school, her whole school career to learn even more information. There you go. All right, 654, 64 degrees out. And let's take a look at some birthdays this weekend. We have Audrina Q. Peg turning nine years old. Happy birthday. And next up, we have Thaddeus, one year old. Happy first birthday, Thaddeus. Woo. Keep sending those birthday pictures into ksats.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and an age. We show them every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday right here on GMSA. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the death toll for the coronavirus now surpassing SARS and passengers quarantined on a cruise ship in Japan. At least 70 people on board infected with the coronavirus as concerns over the global outbreak rise. Plus, two American soldiers dead this morning after an ambush in Afghanistan and what appears to have been an insider attack. This morning, the motives unknown. And finally, the Oscars are here. The stars and the sparkle just hours away. We're bringing you behind the scenes and taking a sneak peek at what to expect from the red carpet looks. That's all ahead here on GMA. The westbound lanes of Highway 90 near Couples Road remain shut down for hours as authorities cleaned up and processed the scene of a deadly accident. Authorities say this all happened around 350 this morning when a driver was headed down Highway 90 westbound. They suspect the driver of a truck was speeding down the highway and as of now say it possibly played a big factor in what happened next. Preliminary information suggests that the driver tried to exit on Sarsamora, but instead hit the wall divider head on. And by the time police and EMS got to the scene this morning, that driver of the truck was unfortunately already dead. This morning, no positive ID from the medical examiner's office just yet, but police do say he's a male in his early 20s. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. And taking a last look at the radar, there are some areas of light rain generally east of San Antonio and some drizzle around San Antonio itself. That's reducing visibility down to a quarter of a mile at the airport. So please use caution on the roadways, especially if you live in northwestern Bear County. Today we'll have a small chance for isolated rain through about noon, a potential for some sun in the afternoon and temperatures warming up to near 73. But tomorrow morning's cold front is going to drop our temperatures down into the 50 these guys rain chances through Wednesday jacket weather all right yeah Sarah, thank you so much all right so we're about to take an hour-long break for Good Morning America but don't worry we have so much coming up at 8 o'clock leading SA we sit down with the CEO and president of SA 2020 where has San Antonio gone in the last 10 years and where are we headed and also we're gonna talk more about the Oscars and what what we think about yeah. it <laughs> and the live look at radar of course bye guys
got a little bit of rain here, mainly drizzle around the Alamo City, but you can see out towards Seguin and Floresville some areas of light rain and visibility is pretty bad around San Antonio visibility down to a quarter of a mile because of the mist and drizzle down to a mile and a quarter in New Braunfels. Now today we'll have a chance for isolated light rain throughout the day. A few peaks of sun possible in the afternoon, 73 for the afternoon high, so it's going to be a warm and muggy day, but we'll have a cold front tomorrow morning. Good morning, I'm meteorologist Sarah Spivey. With a look ahead at the rest of the day, we have got areas of drizzle and light rain out there. It's damp, dreary, and drizzly outside. Around San Antonio, kind of difficult to see, but there are some light showers right on the Wilson and Bear County line, uh, just uh, to the east of Calaveras Lake at the moment. But most of the light rain is east of San Antonio near Seguin, but that doesn't mean we don't have areas of drizzle out there. In fact, areas of drizzle are reducing visibility around the airport uh, to less than a quarter of a mile. So please use caution on the roadways. Visibility is only at a mile up at Bernie Stage Airfield, generally north of Highway 90 and out toward New Braunfels. Uh, there are some areas of fog and drizzle. We'll have isolated showers today, a high near 73 with a few peaks of sun in the afternoon. And then a cold front tomorrow morning is going to send our temperatures down into the 40s and 50s for three days in a row with a chance for rain. We do have some areas of light rain, especially east of San Antonio, but generally drizzle, which is reducing visibility around San Antonio. We'll carry a chance for light rain throughout the day. A few peaks of sunshine in the afternoon. All in all, it's going to be a pretty warm day. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A walk to her husband's business ends with a woman getting shot. Alicia Brera is live with what police has say happened and what we know this morning. And the Democratic presidential candidates are getting ready for the New Hampshire primaries. Who is saying it's time for a new voice and face in Washington? And let's take a live look out of the Alamo City. This is what we're looking at right now. 65 degrees to start your Sunday morning. We're going to check in with Sarah to see if any of this is going to clear up throughout the day and throughout the weekend. Good morning. 8 a.m. this Sunday, February 9th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, it doesn't look like we can see too much outside mm -hmm. right now. I'm happy, though. It's 65 degrees, so not cold, yeah, which mild. is ideal. Mm -hmm. But, Sarah, are we going to have any conditions like yesterday? Well, we do have a small possibility to see a little bit of sun in the afternoon, just briefly, but all in all, today will be gray. Yesterday, we had those clouds stick on until about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Today, it'll stay mostly gray. And as you can see from that live cam view just a little while ago, we've got areas of fog and drizzle out there, and even some areas of light rain. Drizzle is too light to show up on the radar, but we are getting some light rain showers out east of San Antonio. Uh, you can see through Seguin, and even down in Wilson County, we'll go ahead and zoom in on this little rain shower at the moment south of Lavernia, working its way uh, across a 87 and 123 just around Stockdale. A quick splash and dash shower. But again, other than that, we're really just dealing with drizzle and mist around Bear County. In fact, visibility in, in the northern part of the county north of Highway 90 is less than a quarter of mile in many places, including the airport and at Bernie Stage Airfield right on the Kendall and Bear County line. Visibility down to a mile and a half in New Braunfels. Again, this is because of the drizzle and, and fog in some places. Uh, temperatures a lot warmer than how we started off uh, the day even yesterday. And in fact, a lot warmer than average. We usually see a morning low in the upper 40s this time of year, and we're sitting nearly 20 degrees above that. That's because humidity has returned. It is muggy outside. Max and Stephanie were right. It's it's not cold. It's in fact, it's going to be very mild through the rest of the morning. Isolated showers pretty much all day, but especially in the morning hours. And then if we do see a few peaks of sunshine in the afternoon that'll bump up our high temperature today into the low to mid 70s southeast breeze today at 5 to 10 miles per hour keeping the humidity high today is going to be mild and muggy but tomorrow and throughout the rest of uh, most of the week we are going to be a lot cooler with a decent chance for rain much needed rain as many of us are dealing with drought a lot to unpack in the forecast and we'll get down to it in just a few minutes max stephanie Thank you, Sarah. A scary scene this morning on the city's east side after police responded to a call for a shooting. Now one woman was taken to the hospital and the shooter is still on the run. Our Alicia Beretta is live this morning with what happened. Alicia. 
Good morning. Well, I can tell you that the victim was shot on this block while walking to meet her husband. You can actually see some of the crime scene still left from last night's scene, and we know that the victim's injuries are serious. This um, shooting was reported around 2.30 this morning here on the city's east side. Um, we're told the victim was walking on the 4100 block of North Hine Road, not far, far, not far from MLK Drive and South WW White Road. The victim told police she was walking to her husband's workplace when a vehicle pulled up next to her. She claimed someone in the vehicle pulled a gun and shot twice. Police say the woman was shot in her lower back and her ankle. She's now at Bamsey Hospital in serious but stable condition. Police this morning have yet to make an arrest. Just ahead on GMSA at 8.30 this morning, do police have any leads on who these suspects are? And if there's a motive, I have that coming up. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Alicia. New this morning, a man is dead after hitting some barriers head on at Highway 90 and Zarzamora. Now, police say it happened at four in the morning when a 20 year old man was driving his truck at a high rate of speed and hit the barriers head on. Police are telling us that the man was dead when they got there. That investigation is still ongoing. In national news, it's the final sprint for the New Hampshire primary, and things are heating up as Democrats make their final pitch to voters. Former Vice President Joe Biden is sharpening his attacks against Pete Buttigieg, but the former South Bend mayor say it's time for a new voice and a new face in Washington. And former Amy Klobuchar reportedly raised at least $2 million in just hours after Friday night's debate. The New Hampshire primary is this Tuesday. And 10 years ago, after five public meetings and the input of more than 6,000 San Antonians, the Alamo City compiled a list of issues they wanted to see maintained or improved by the end of the decade. Now, those 11 issues range from arts and culture to uh, transportation to education to economic competitiveness. The nonprofit SA2020 was formed, and it was formed to keep San Antonio on track to meet these goals. We are now in 2020, so in this week's leading essay, I sit down with the president and CEO of SA2020, Molly Cox, and we check in on the progress and what's next. I think uh, the state of San Antonio is one that is showing incremental progress. 72% uh, of the indicators we currently track are moving in the right direction. Um, so doing better today than they were in 2010 when we started. SA 2020 works with more than 160 different organizations across various sectors of our community to actively make our goals a reality. There's something very uh, powerful, right, about a community vision that was written by humans who live here then being the agenda by which policymakers create policy or public institutions invest dollars or nonprofits shift the way that they're doing um, their programming. One of the mantras of the nonprofit is that data is important, but it doesn't tell the full story. That being said, three of the worst data points revolved around transportation. Specifically, they were broken down into walkability, commute time, and miles traveled in a vehicle. For us, we consistently say our community said it wanted more walkable neighborhoods. Our community said it wanted fewer miles traveled. Our community said they wanted to reduce commute times. And I think the challenge on that is there isn't a buckshot, right? Another negative part of the findings was the decline in professional certificates. The latest data on the SA 2020 database shows a 110% movement in the wrong direction. That might just seem like a number, but it could have huge implications on our economic competitiveness, aka bringing more businesses and jobs to town. Companies are looking at our educational attainment rates or our professional certification completion and saying, we don't have the talent here. And we would say the talent is here. We're not preparing them. What are we doing in an effort to flip the script again and say, our, the talent is here. One step towards improving these numbers are the recent increase in education initiatives. So things like Alamo Promise or UTSA's Bold Promise or Texas A&M San Antonio's work with the Southside School Districts for Aspire give us um, very targeted approaches to making sure that students are not only college ready, but then enroll in college and get, then get through college so that they are then contributing not only to their own families and their own households, but to our community at large. So what's next for SA 2020? They are taking this year for more community engagement and hearing from you, the public. Um, based on those nearly 70 ambassadors and our partners with over 160 multi-sector institutions, we think we can reach 162,850 people. It is as easy as going on the website and taking a five-minute survey. 
As of today, more than 1,500 surveys have been completed. Education and transportation, two of the most popular topics mentioned. So, as we move into the next decade, what's the biggest takeaway? The biggest takeaway is that when you work together towards common goals, positive community change happens. We have literally proved that with 10 years worth of information. And one of the biggest changes over the last decade is teen pregnancy numbers. They're down 46%, one of the largest decreases in the entire country. And they did so by aligning entities from all over the spectrum, joining together. And there were ripples throughout various issues. San Antonians said that they wanted fixed. Now, another great point of data shows the downtown economic impact was more than double the benchmark set. A negative, though, the obesity rate. So you can find all this on the database at sa2020.org. And you can watch the full interview with Molly Cox on kset.com right now. Yeah, and those numbers for downtown economic development, staggering. They're Looking huge. great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's pretty interesting. I was uh, yeah, actually surprised by the obesity one. I was hoping that in the last Go 10 the years, way. right, with all the you know initiatives to keep people fit and everything. So we'll see maybe the next 10 years. Overall, the last decades looked great. 72% yeah. improvement on all the goals, which is great. Looking very good. Check it out. All right. Time to talk Spurs, silver and black, four games into the rodeo road trip. And so far, zero and four. Last night, the Spurs had seemingly the easiest matchup on the trip, taking on the Kings in Sacramento. So let's take a look at those highlights. Let's see it. There is the man of the day, kind of. Boom, from outside. One of the few threes that the Spurs actually hit. Going inside, DeJounte Murray. Woo, DeMar DeRozan dunked. Now, the first quarter was close. The Kings only outscoring San Antonio by one point. But here's the problem. That was the most competitive quarter for the Spurs. In the third quarter, the Kings took over, dominating the rest of the way. Thanks to a surge off the, of offense off the bench, Buddy Heald, he knocked down nine threes. He's on the Kings, not the Spurs. That would have helped the Spurs. It also didn't help the Spurs that DeMar DeRozan thrown out of the game after consecutive technical fouls. DeJounte Murray, though, the lone bright star of the game. He finished with 17 points, nine assists, and nine rebounds. Clearly, though, not enough. The Spurs lose 102 to 122. So the rodeo road trip continues tomorrow, 8 p.m. They are headed to Denver, taking on the Nuggets at the Pepsi Center in Colorado. I have to admit, when the game was starting, I was already getting ready for bed. Yeah, no, it's, it's not easy. <laughs> it's a late game, yes. Yeah, thank goodness for replays. Yeah, but go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, yes. go. 810, 65 degrees out. And the Music Man is in town, the Woodland Theater, kicking off the year with this amazing musical. We're going to have more about it still ahead on GMSA. And also still ahead, you might like thin crust, deep dish, or hand tossed. Do you guess what I'm talking about yet? Can you see it in front of you? It is National Pizza Day. I prefer deep dish. Yeah, I do too, but I try to stay away from it. The problem is you can't reheat deep dish well. No, the problem is the calories. Shh, calories don't count on National Pizza Day. <laughs> Let's take a live look outside. I wish. So we can't see much, but I'm say I'm hearing that we're looking at the south side, right? <laughs> yes, that is correct. Okay, there is the south side. Trust us. Yeah, looking a little drizzly out there. We're going to check little? in. Yeah, we're going to check in with Sarah. We should be expecting more rain, but she'll give us the full details just ahead. We are backstage at the Woodlawn Theater where they are opening the musical classic, The Music Man. Let's go check it out. <laughs> the Music Man is about a, uh, basically a con salesman who travels to Iowa and tries to scam this one town by saying he can start up a boys band when he doesn't know how to play music. The musical is amazing, actually. It's one of those like classic Broadway musical pieces that you don't see very often. There's great dancing, amazing songs, beautiful singers. Everyone in this cast, I'm just truly amazed by how everyone sounds. Um, and there's some really funny parts, too. The Music Man is at the Woodlawn Theater from January 31st to February 23rd. Sarah Spivey, KSAT 12 News. You know what I love about community theater? All of those people have wonderful and extremely normal jobs outside of <laughs> yeah. musical theater. Yeah, a couple of people that I was talking to there. The actress, the right? The actress, a uh, teacher at Northwest Vista, and the guy there, he works at USAA. So it's so cool. It really is a community theater. So go out and support community theater yes. if you can. Of course, we've got the Oscars tonight I know. on KSAT, but 
We've got a couple of stars of our own this weekend at the it, Woodlawn. It shows uh, their passion, though, Definitely. because it is community. And so this is their extra time on top of their jobs and all their other uh, I was going to say all their other requirements in life. <laughs> but, yes, yes, Stephanie, well said. Let's talk about the weather and talk about uh, the areas of drizzle around San Antonio right now and the areas of light rain. Here's a look at the radar at the moment. Completely cloudy around San Antonio. You know, yesterday we salvaged a little bit of sun in the afternoon after a cloudy start, but Today, it's going to be harder for us to see that sunshine. Uh, as you can see around Bear County at the moment, we're not seeing any of these light radar returns, but we are experiencing some areas of mist and drizzle. And of course, if you're driving around San Antonio this morning, the roads are damp, so you will run into some areas of road spray. But there are some light rain showers working their way closer to Seguin right now, uh, working their way kind of right up one 23 just to the east of New Berlin. So Seguin, you'll continue to get a few of those splash and dash showers early this morning. Uh, Gonzalez getting some light rain in New Braunfels as well. Uh, other than that, though, it really is just drizzly around San Antonio and a bit foggy too. So visibility is reduced north of Highway 90. Uh, temperatures, though, much warmer than seasonably average. Our average morning low this time of year is about 43. So we're working at about 20 degrees above that average morning low and not only around San Antonio, but also out toward Del Rio at 66, 69 in Catula, and they're starting the day at 71 in Laredo. Humidity is pretty high and really returned pretty quickly. This time yesterday, our dew points were very dry in the 30s. But as you can see, that green color totally encompassing all of the map, that is muggy. Whenever we get a dew point above 60 degrees, that's when you really start to feel the mugginess in the air. And take a look at the future cast. You'll notice that splash and dash isolated showers will be possible for most of the day, especially this first part of the day. Maybe a few peaks of sunshine in the afternoon. But that's about it. And it's going to be a little bit on the warmer side, too. A high temperature likely in the low 70s. Southeast wind at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Again, we will have some sun in the afternoon. And then it'll be mild this evening. Temperatures today much warmer than average. But we do have a cold front on the horizon. That cold front will move through Right at about the morning commute tomorrow, bringing with it a chance for more organized rain. You know, today we're just going to have those isolated light showers, but take a look at the future cast. Potentially a, a bit of a line of showers, possibly even a few rumbles of thunder between about 8 and 10 o'clock in the morning. So. If you do have your morning commute around that time, which a lot of us do, I would give yourself an extra 15 to 20 minutes to get to where you want to go. Some places will get good amount of rain, others will not. So after that front moves through, uh, we will see temperatures tumble into the 40s and 50s for most of next week because those clouds are going to be stubborn. We'll have light rain again on Tuesday and then a better chance for scattered showers and a few storms early on Wednesday. Temperatures will then re bound as skies start to clear on Thursday and Friday. It should be pretty nice for Valentine's Day. Now, unfortunately, again, we just will not see that sunshine for the next few days, but I'm going to be a little selfish here mm. <laughs> and I'm going to say it gives me a chance to wear my sweaters again. Oh, <laughs> true. You know, yes. How often do we get to wear sweaters? In I know, San Antonio? and then our rain jackets. If you have yep. a nice little, you know, cute trench coat, <laughs> the rain you boots. Hear something really cute. <laughs> yeah. My husband and I got matching raincoats. Yes, that's <laughs> right. And now you can sport them in San Antonio. In you don't San have Antonio. to travel away from San Antonio for that. That's true. <laughs> How cute. I got nothing. You got you nothing. Got nothing? Uh, no cute, no cute trench coat. 65 degrees. No cute trench coat over here. Oh, <laughs> Max. Hey, but I'm sure you I like can talk pizza. about that. Yeah. So are you eating pizza today? If not, now you have a reason to do that. It's National Pizza Day. That's ahead on GMSA. There's always an excuse to eat pizza. Hey, I agree. Also, Oscars are tonight. Do you have your picks in? We have ours. Find out what we're picking to win big. Just ahead. Good morning and welcome back. 824 this Sunday morning, an important Sunday. If you're an Oscars fan, we have our top picks for best actresses. I picked Cynthia Erivo, Harriet. I actually 
just picked her because I listened to an interview before work this morning. <laughs> Phenomenal. Yeah. Really intriguing. She's so you a really did, great actor. You did some research. Oh, I did extensive research. We are going to be Very giving good. our picks throughout the morning. I needed research. Both so Stephanie there you go. And There's I, our pick. Yeah, we picked Renee Zellweger. I think my thought process was I, she won the Golden Globe. So uh, usually if you win the Golden Globe, mm. you have a good chance of winning the Academy Award. Well, I'm still, well, you know, true confession, I'm still waiting to see that movie. Um, mm. So I haven't seen it yet, but I've seen a bunch of previews. Yeah, and, and Gabby, I've looked it up, and I'm like oh, already, already right. impressed. Gabby, our producer, picked Charlize Theron from Bombshell, mm. uh, just and she said it's just because she's the underdog. Which I <laughs> was pretty great. Well, you never know. It'll be interesting to see who, <laughs> it who takes will. it. All right. Well, while you're watching the Oscars tonight, you might as well enjoy a big pizza. You want to know why? Ask because why. it tastes good. No, I'm just kidding. Well, yes, but because <laughs> it's also National Pizza Day. <laughs> I'm kidding, Max. Yes, National Pizza Day. And for centuries, pizza was primarily a dish enjoyed in Italy. But pizza truly became part of American culture after World War II as U.S. soldiers stationed in Italy developed quite the taste for it. Mm. So just how popular is pizza? Well, according to the National Association of Pizza Operators, that is a heck of an association, about three billion pizzas are sold every year just here in the United States. Most everybody I know loves pizza. I have to say... Uh, Are you about to throw shade at pizza right now? No, no. Okay. The only person I knew that, that didn't like pizza mm. was my, my grandfather, but he's... Mm. Uh, but I don't think he, he grew up with it. I mean, if he were alive, he would be 120 years old, so... <laughs> that, wow. That's, it wasn't in his generation, but well, everybody I else say. I know... Loves pizza. Love pizza. Three billion sold here in the U.S. Yeah. I probably account for one million of them. 826, <laughs> 65 degrees out. And a canine in Arizona retires. The emotional goodbye. That's up next on GMSA. And the latest on the coronavirus. The death toll continues to rise. We're going to have the latest numbers just ahead. Good morning and happy Sunday, 8.30 a.m. And we are already seeing temperatures like mid-60s. Yeah, pretty mild. It's just, you might want to grab a rain Ooh. jacket or, you know, We said umbrella. mild. We didn't say it was good <laughs> conditions out there. But yeah, it's still mild. <laughs> you can't get a tan today. That's a big problem. No, you right, have so all you're... summer long oh, to Max. do that. Oh, Max. <laughs> Priorities. I love when your Philadelphia accent comes out a little bit. You can't get a tan today. That's kind of <laughs> That's more New Jersey, but that's neither here nor there. Oh, sorry. I'll go get a glass of water. <laughs> uh, no, let's take a look at the pollen count. We do have it just coming in uh, this morning. Thankfully, everything is low. Mold is low, elm is low, and ash is low as well. Mold a little bit higher than both uh, the tree pollens there. Mold is low at 490. Uh, but again, like Max and Stephanie were saying, it is gray out there. We have seen a reduction in the light shower activity just out to the east uh, near uh, Seguin and Gonzalez at the moment, uh, starting to see those uh, dissipate just a little bit. But again, you're about to get a, a brief moderate rain shower just for uh, probably a few minutes before that pushes on north uh, toward the Guadalupe Comal County uh, boundary there. And visibility has improved a little bit around San Antonio, but there still are areas of fog and mist. Uh, visibility back up above a mile around the airport, but down to half a mile at Bernie Stage Airfield right at the Kendall uh, and Bear County line. And temperatures this morning, very mild. You won't really need a jacket unless it's a rain jacket. 63 in Bandera, 62 in Kerrville, 67 in Castroville, 64 in Tarpley, 65 in New Braunfels, and 64 at JBSA Randolph. We'll carry these clouds for us throughout most of the day. There could be a few peaks of sunshine in the afternoon, but other than that, 30% chance for drizzle and light rain. Southeast wind at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Believe it or not, better rain chances right around the corner, all thanks to a cold front. Busy forecast coming at you in just a few minutes. Max Stephanie. Thanks, Sarah. A 911 call came in around 2.30 this morning on the east side for gunfire in the 4100 block of North Hind Road. Now that's near MLK Drive and South WW White. Our Alicia Beretta is live with the latest. Now, Alicia, have police said if they have any leads on who the shooter could be? Well, they're actually looking for two suspects, two men, but that victim says that she's actually never seen either of them. So the only piece of evidence really that police have to go off of, of this morning is the color of the vehicle, which is a silver vehicle. So again, police this morning looking for a si silver vehicle with two suspects inside. According to the victim, it was just before 2.30 this morning when she was walking to meet her husband at his job. Then a vehicle pulled up to, next to her. She claims 
least two men were inside that vehicle. At least one of them pulled a gun, shot twice and again took off. The woman we know was shot in her lower back as well as her ankle. She's been taken to Bamsi. She is in serious but stable condition, so authorities are hoping that she recovers and that way they can speak to her this morning and hopefully get more information to track down those two men who are still on the run. Reporting live from the city's east side, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Also new this morning, one man is in the hospital after being hit by a train overnight, a situation that could have been much worse. San Antonio police telling us a man was walking along train tracks around 340 this morning. All of this happening in the 1000 block West Ashby Place, when as a train was approaching, he was actually sideswiped by one of the train cars. Officials say that he was just walking too close to the train as it was passing. He was taken to University Hospital in stable condition and he is expected to be OK. And a 16 year old boy is in serious condition after getting hit by an SUV while riding his bike. According to police, the teen was riding his bike on Glen Avenue in Bordeaux when a woman in an SUV hit him. The woman told police she did not see the boy, but she did stop to help. The boy was taken to Sansi in serious but stable condition. No charges will be filed. And a teenager is dead and another charged with murder after a shooting in Arlington. Arlington police saying that 16 year old Samuel Reynolds intervened to stop a 15 year old who was assaulting and bullying another teen a few days ago. Then yesterday, the bully tried to confront Reynolds, pulled out a gun and shot him. Reynolds later died. The suspect, the 15 year old arrested soon after now facing murder charges. And two American soldiers are dead and six wounded after an attack in eastern Afghanistan. U.S. officials say an Afghan dressed in an Afghan army uniform opened fire late last night. The gunman was later killed. Six U.S. service members have been killed in Afghanistan this year. And last year, 22 U.S. service personnel died from hostile action. Chinese authorities now trying to slow the rapid spread of the coronavirus. The global death toll risen to more than 800 people, including one American citizen. As of today, 813 people have died from the virus. That's more than the deaths of SARS, the severe acute respiratory syndrome outbreak of 2003. Now, the number of infected globally, now more than 37,000 people with over 2,000 new infections confirmed in mainland China overnight. Important to note, none of the coronavirus evacuees here in San Antonio have been diagnosed. And time now, 836, 65 degrees out. And a canine's last day at work, how the police department in Arizona got to say goodbye. And it is a big day in Hollywood. Who are going to be the winners? Who are going to be the losers? The Oscars are tonight, and we have a full preview just ahead. Look at that little face. I mean, <laughs> just it, no, don't hide. We want to see you. <laughs> We're going to see more of her. There we go. Coming up after the break on Good Morning San Antonio. And taking a look outside with the airport live cam, can't see too much, but there <laughs> is a roadway there, trust us. Uh, yeah, weather, you know, a little drizzly may not be the best day to wear your Oscars gown, but maybe you don't have to worry about that here in San Antonio. We'll be right back. Off camera, she was just like looking around. As soon as we started <laughs> recording, she's like slinking down and all that <laughs> stuff. It's Beth's fault. So she, <laughs> It's camera nerves. <laughs> or best call. Right. Uh, who's this little baby? Um, this is Polly. She is a little uh, two-month-old terrier mix who lives at our Paul Jolly Center. Um, and she is just super cute and cuddly and very, very ready to snuggle up in someone's home. And just those little ears that flop forward <laughs> and that, that little face. She's just, just hanging kind of, out. Yeah, she just, kind of, just kind of looks. Kind of, kind of a serious look yeah. on her face. So. Oh. Oh my She's not going to be the biggest dog in the world and, and just a perfect little cuddler. Nice short coat, easy to take care She's of. She's very, very sweet. Yeah. What you got going on? <laughs> um, yeah, so as spring is coming, it's right around the corner. We are bracing ourselves for all the babies. We are about to mm -hmm. get so many babies um, as all of the stray animals in the city make babies. So um, one of the big needs that we have is for foster. Uh, we have all that coming right around the corner and sometimes those babies are the hardest ones to place just because they are a lot of work they take a lot of time um, so for anybody who maybe works from home or is retired or anything like that that has the time to help us take care of some of those babies that would be incredibly helpful to us well, hi sweetie yeah and sometimes the little baby bottle feeders you know you're up in the middle yeah of the it's a lot like of that. work and it just it really helps them out so much kids can get uh, volunteer hours for it as well yeah yep it's 
a it's a really great way to kind of teach kids what all that takes, what goes into rescuing a baby animal. Um, and you can fill out the application for that on the website. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. if you'd like more information about that and this little baby, look at her. She's going to kick him back there. Yeah, and just head on over to 1130 under Nacogdoches or, as Beth mentioned, the Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo. 655-1481 is the number to call. Thank you, dear. I'm going to say it. Polly, one of the cutest pups we've ever yes, featured. Yes, I've been staring show. at her the whole time. She's so cute, her Aww. little her little pop belly hanging out. <laughs> so cute, so, so sweet. Yeah. Well, again, awesome work that the Animal Defense League does there, and we are really starting to get into a very gray and damp weather pattern, guys. We won't be seeing full sun until Thursday of this upcoming week. So yeah. Get ready for uh, just the gray weather. Take a look at the radar and satellite. You can see all that light rain to the east of uh, San Antonio, but we've even got some light returns out in Medina County right now, right around Hondo uh, along Highway uh, 90. Uh, so uh, again, some of this is showing up on the radar. Otherwise, most of it is just some mist and drizzle around San Antonio. The real light rain is now working its way north of Seguin uh, and uh, pushing further into Guadalupe and Comal counties. Let's take a look at visibility though. This is where you can really see where the areas of fog and even some drizzle are right here, centered right around uh, San Antonio and north into the hill country. Visibility down to a mile and a quarter in Kerrville, down to a mile and a half in New Braunfels as well. And we're uh, starting to see improving visibility elsewhere though. Temperatures much warmer than average. In fact, it's muggy outside with temperatures in the mid 60s. San Antonio at 65 degrees 68 in Gonzales close to 70 in Pleasanton it's uh, close to 70 in Catula and it's 71 in Laredo 66 out in Del Rio but it's much cooler up to the north look at these temperatures 20 in Casper Wyoming 25 in Denver we've got a cold front in the panhandle right now which will be making it to us by Monday morning tomorrow morning right around the morning commute but until then again today gray with areas of isolated rain and patchy drizzle that front will move through right like I said around the morning commute and as it does so that's when rain is going to become a little bit more organized the possibility for a couple of rumbles of thunder but generally what it'll probably be is just a line of showers and that will make for a little bit of a messy morning commute that on top of the fog and drizzle tomorrow morning as well so give yourself an extra 20 minutes to get to where you need to go uh, tomorrow now temperatures will fall from near 70 degrees tomorrow after that front moves through into the 40s and 50s uh, for the day on Tuesday and on Wednesday. And on top of that, there's going to be more chances for rain. But today, just drizzle and light rain, about 30%, and warming up to 73. We do have a potential to see a couple of peaks of sunshine in the afternoon, but a lot less sun than yesterday. You know, yesterday we started off gray, saw a decent amount of sunshine right before sunset, but unfortunately today it's just going to be a few peaks of sunshine. Southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour, and then again with that front moving through early tomorrow morning, our temperatures are going to fall into the 50s uh, for high temperatures before we round back out on Thursday and Friday. On top of that, there's going to be more chance for rain as well. A better chance Monday morning with that front moving through and on Wednesday morning as well, but still Tuesday will probably be a lot like today with just a little bit more rain on the radar. So it's going to be damp and dreary over the next few days. But we do need some rainfall. It's been a while since we've seen decent rain. And this is a look at the maximum potential rainfall. Not what we're going to get on average, but the maximum potential rainfall. Del Rio could see maybe up to a half an inch of rain. Areas in the hill country, maybe up to three quarters of an inch of rain, up to an inch and a half to an, an inch to an inch and a half for areas like Fredericksburg, Blanco, uh, Kendall County, and out toward Kerrville. So this would be good. We've got extreme drought out in Del Rio, so it would be nice to see a little bit of rain. We'll take any little bit that we can get. And again, it'll be much cooler during this first part of the week. 50s for highs, 40s for lows. We'll even dip down into the 30s by Friday, but Friday, Valentine's Day, we'll see beautiful sunshine 65 as nice. we head into the weekend How so important just a is cold it morning the rain? so important because uh, you know we usually don't see that much rain in January and February so if we can get a decent amount of rain we'll be good all right so it's good that we have it yep thank you Sarah mm -hmm. thanks Sarah 846 65 degrees out
And by the end of today, we will know who is taking home Oscar gold at the 92nd Academy Awards. Mm -hmm. And they are tonight. ABC's Romina Puga at the Dolby Theater in Hollywood with what we can expect later tonight. The red carpet is rolled out and ready. And tonight we'll find out who's taking home one of those coveted Oscars. The show is going hostless for the second year in a row, a format that raised viewership last year. Even though there's not a host this year, you can still expect there to be plenty of star power at the Oscars. There will have big name presenters, big name performers. It'll be a very, very Hollywood centric night. A historic night for some. I'm gonna be free or die. Like Cynthia Revo, who would be the youngest EGOT winner, which stands for Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony, if she takes home an award. It's just so crazy, though. It's crazy. And, you know, it would be a huge honor. Um, I don't know what I will do if it happens. The pressure has been building for the nominees. The best supporting actor category this year is completely stacked with acting legends. Tom Hanks, Anthony Hopkins, Al Pacino, Joe Pesci, and the youngest in the group, Brad Pitt, all Hollywood veterans. Are you an actor? No, I'm a stuntman. One film critic favorite, Laura Dern, has already taken home several other awards this season for her supporting actress role in Marriage Story. Part of what we're going to do together is tell your story. But will she also win that golden Oscar? And South Korean thriller Parasite, wowing audiences and critics alike with six nominations, likely to win Best Foreign Picture, but is also nominated for Best Picture, only the sixth film to ever be recognized in both categories. Every year the show tries to cut its runtime. Same drill this year with the winners getting 90 seconds to make their way to the stage and deliver their acceptance speeches. In Hollywood, Romina Puga, ABC News. All right, well, it is time to make our Oscar picks. This time we are talking best director. I chose Sam Mendes, director of 1917. And I picked Sam Mendes as well <sighs> for those interesting shots. And I picked Bong Jong Hu, who did Parasite. And the reason why is he has created so many other films that are wonderful. And I'm so excited that uh, he gets the recognition from the Academy Awards. Gabby agrees with you as well. Yeah. He's created a lot of really awesome films. Yeah, right, so now I'm hoping though, real quick on mm -hmm. Parasite, uh, I'm hoping that it might get this picture. Yeah, that would be great. So it's kind of like a, I mean, it, it's not like a cult movie, but like, can you explain to people who might not have seen it what yeah, it is? Yeah, Parasite, for mm -hmm. sure. Okay, so it's about this family uh, that lives in Korea and they are uh, like blue collar working class family and they- Struggling. Struggle, yeah. yeah and uh, they kind of take on the role of trying to trick this upper class family uh, to hiring them and then they work their way into that family's lives even further and it leads to chaos, confusion, and the like. Yeah, but it's very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. I haven't seen it yet. You, so should, I mean, you should see it. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> All right, time to go to teases. It is 849, about 65 degrees out. And a video going viral how a police department in Arizona got to say goodbye to their beloved canine. That's next on GMSA. All right, time to take a look at those birthdays. First up Aww. is Mike, 50 years old. He's got a beloved canine of his own. Happy yeah, birthday, Mike. Cute pick. And this is, yes, we have her, Samantha. That's a cute pick, six years old. Oh my goodness, I love this. I love her expression. Happy birthday. And keep sending your birthday pictures to ksat.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and an age. We show them every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday right here on GMSA. And tomorrow on GMSA, the surprising person that could protect teenagers from dating violence. And taking a look at the pollen count today, if it loads, it's being a little slow. Uh, mold, mountain cedar, and uh, sorry, mold, ash, and elm are low as well. But again, it looks like we're having a little bit of problems on our computer here. Uh, all you need to know for, there it goes, all you need to know for the weather today is that there are some areas of light rain out there, especially east of San Antonio. But other than that, drizzle and 73 uh, for the high today with hopefully a few peaks of sunshine in the afternoon because take a look at this forecast. We're going to say goodbye to the sun temporarily until late Wednesday. Uh, and again, temperatures will be falling into the 40s and 50s over the next few days. We'll be seeing clearing skies and beautiful weather by Friday.
Well, great. Awesome. Just for Valentine's Day. Right, Beautiful. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. A beloved top dog at an Arizona police department is retiring. His name is Bruno, and he's certified in patrol tactics and narcotics detection. His reward, an ice cream sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> and some belly rubs. The police department posted this video Aww. of Bruno last his last day on the job. His career with the ORO Valley Police Department spans seven human years, but Bruno also got a last call from the dispatcher. Take a listen. Thank you for all your hard work and for making sure your handler got home safe every night. After helping the thieves close to a million dollars in narcotics, you deserve some much earned belly rubs. <laughs> you can now chase rabbits instead of bad guys. Aw, his career with the Oro Valley Police Department spanned seven human years, 49 dog years, just to put that into perspective. <laughs> so he worked for the police department for 49 years. That's a crazy. hard worker. Yeah, the canine's accomplishments include sniffing out nearly, get this, a million dollars worth of drugs, and of course, keeping his handler safe. How cool, and what a nice reward, the ice cream sandwich. And the belly rubs. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah. I think Aww. they also should have said, what a good boy. That's Aww, pretty awesome. Oh, yeah. Thank you guys so much for joining yes. us for GMSA. Have a beautiful Sunday. See ya. <laughs>